fall is one of my favorite times to do landscape photography. And in this video, I wanna break down how to get these amazing fall colors out of your photos because I'm sure what you might notice is that you see these amazing reds and yellows when you're out on location and then you get home and you look at your photos and things just do not look the way you saw them. So that's really what we're gonna be focusing on today. So for this, you're gonna need Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop, but you can also use Lightroom and follow along as well. All right, here's our original raw photo. Not a lot of great colors here. It's pretty blue, pretty dark, and we've got a lot of work to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually increase the saturation all the way. And then I wanna fix the white balance because that's really what's screwing me up right now. So I can try just going to auto. Sometimes that does a good job. Or scroll down through the presets, or even just do this manually. So I'm gonna increase the temperature and then maybe adjust the hue, or rather the tint a little bit. I think that looks pretty good there compared to the original photo. So that white balance was our first big obstacle, and now I can turn down my saturation again. The next step is to just make the image overall a bit brighter, it is kinda dark. And for that, you can usually bring up the shadows quite a bit, add some contrast, and then bring down the highlights so you're not losing too much detail there in the sky. And this already looks a heck of a lot better than when we started. I'm already pretty happy with this, but we still got quite a bit of work to do. These are just the very beginning edits. The next step would be to go to your HSL tab here. This stands for Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. So saturation is normally what I start off with, and this is where we can increase the saturation on individual colors. You want to be careful, though, here. If you really crank it up, you're going to get very weird artifacts. So it always helps to just be... Uh, a little bit more subtle here than overdoing it. And really my main goal right now is not to do anything too extreme, just to get the colors a little bit more realistic. And the great thing is I can only affect the saturation on certain color channels rather than doing it globally here where it affects every single color, some of which you might not want. Now we have complete freedom over the colors in the photo. So that'd be step one is to adjust the saturation. Step two, you can adjust the hue although I usually don't mess with the hue too much, to be honest, and that's something we'll focus more on in Photoshop. But that looks pretty good already there. And then luminance is gonna adjust the brightness of these colors, but again, I do not really recommend adjusting the luminance here. All right, well, I think we're just about done in Camera Raw. Pretty quick, pretty easy to do. So I'm gonna hit Open Image, and then our next step is going to be using the Selective Color. So I've got that right here. And just to show you, I kind of went through there quick. Selective color is on this bottom row if you have your adjustments, and it'll be the second one in on the right. If you don't have your adjustments, you can always go up to Window, click on Adjustments, and that should pop up somewhere. Once you have your selective color open, if you double click on this little icon here, that'll bring it up. Uh, somewhere you'll have a Properties tab. And from here, you can choose all of your individual color channels again. So if I want to only affect the reds right now, I can do that. So I'm going to zoom in so I can actually see the image better. And I'm just going to look at the photo while I adjust these sliders and try and get the colors to stand out a little bit better than they were originally. And what I've noticed is that, especially on my camera, the reds never tend to come through very well. They're usually desaturated and flat. And the yellows tend to be a little bit more green than they should be. So I can go to the yellows tab now and I can either make them a little bit more green or yellowish red. And this is all up to your personal tastes, trying to remember the colors that you actually saw because like we've already discussed, very often your camera is unable to capture these colors just the way you saw them unless you know how to edit your photos properly. And we'll just go through one by one until we have all of our different color channels edited. And this is already looking really amazing compared to the way it looked when we first started. I'm already really happy with our image. However, there's one last thing I want to show you today, because as we can clearly see, this is a very fast, simple workflow, uh, mainly using selective color here and doing some minor adjustments in Camera Raw. But if I hit Control, Shift, Alt, and E, or Control, Shift, Option, E on a Mac, that should create a brand new layer. And this layer contains all of the edits you've done beneath it. So in this case, just that selective color, but you'll want this new layer to start off with. From here, I can go up to Filter and Nick Collection. We're gonna be using the Nick Collection for the rest of this video. This is a free download you can get. Well, 
used to be able to get it for free from Google. Now DxO bought them out and they're charging money for it, but uh, it's really good software. Uh, the old free version still works, even on the latest version of Photoshop. So if you can track that down, I'd recommend it, but you can also just pay for it. But anyway, what I would recommend doing is the Film Effects Modern filter here. And you can find that. Uh, if you just hit all, you'll find Film Effects Modern. The way this works is that over here on the right, we have a whole bunch of different filters. And the way I do this is I just start over on the first and then hover down over each filter to see the effect it has. And very often, this is an amazing collection of filters here just because they really make those colors stand out a lot better than they ever would have. And this is by far the easiest way that I've found to drastically affect the colors in your images, regardless of what you're photographing, whether it's fall colors or maybe even a distant nebula. So you can just do this by your own tastes. I kind of actually like one of these earlier ones, maybe. All right, I think I'm gonna go with this one for now. And if I toggle this on and off, I can instantly see the effect it has. It's doing a great job, but as I'm sure you guys, most of you agree, it's just too strong. So for that, if I go to Film Details, I now have access to all of my different color channels again in terms of sensitivity, in other words, brightness, and saturation. So if I wanna make the reds brighter, you can see what amazing uh, impact that has. Or with yellows, I really like that, increasing the sensitivity on the yellows, maybe a bit more on the reds. And even if I overdo it here, that's okay. I can always turn down this effect once we're finished. So I'd rather go a little bit too much than not enough at this stage. But again, you can adjust the brightness of the colors as well as the saturation. And this is really the main reason I love this uh, filter so much. This is Film Effects Modern again, just because you have access to all of these really great utilities. And then the last thing you want to do before you hit OK or anything is come down to where it says grain at the bottom and make sure grain per pixel is at 500. If it's anything other than 500, you're going to have grain added to the photo, which you probably don't want. And then once you've edited the photo the way you like, we can just hit OK. And now the Google Nick collection is going to go through and apply all of our edits to a brand new layer. But I think you'll be surprised by just how much this filter can have impact on your final image. And if you think back to our original starting photo, it was that dark blue desaturated image. And now we're back here. I'm gonna lower the opacity here on the Film Effects Modern considerably. I'm just gonna slowly increase this until I think it's too much. And then from there, I'll back it off a little bit. There we go, 50%. See, that just adds some more life to the photos, even still kind of desaturated before. And that looks amazing. Even just when we got into Photoshop, this is our before. Flat, dull, lifeless, after. Much more vivid. And this is much more representative of what I actually saw when I was out on location. This really captures the essence of being out there rather than uh, this, you know. So I hope this video helped you guys out. And uh, this will help you take your own images of the fall colors and really bring out the beautiful reds and yellows that you see when you're out on location.